Will the education candidates please come to the stage? Each candidate will have five minutes to speak, followed by all these questions. And we're going alphabetical order. So, Gillick, followed by Moran, followed by Rooney. Hi, my name is Gary. I'm a fourth year biotechnology student. Um, Basically, I'm just going to cut straight to the chase with my manifesto. Um, I've got three main points this year. Um, first of all, a lot of people on exam times, or well, my class in particular this year, we did uh, brutally, to be completely honest. Um, and I kind of feel like that was maybe down to not having enough help. Now, not from lectures, um, but more so from tutors. A lot of time people go to tutors and you look on a wall and you have little sheets, maybe little strips to rip off, and it's, you know, maths grinds, very general term. Um, you know, you can spend more time looking for those sheets than you can actually studying. So I mean what I'd like to bring in is perhaps a link from your portal page where there's tutors, a list of tutors on a database system that are specific to your course and your modules. So I mean it's just basically, I don't know, maybe latching on but getting experience or getting help from people who are experienced in your course already. So I think that would be a big help on your portal page and obviously it's quite accessible as well. Uh, there is something like that in place already but Kieran has it on an Excel file and I mean he's a middle man and obviously a lot of his time is taken from getting people to give, to give him their names and he's just a middle man going to them and organising times and I think that could be, a lot of that could be just cut out basically by developing a technological system. Uh, so the second part then as well, there's been a lot of talk today about um, not a very approachable SU. Now if you know the Students' Union, um, they are very approachable. But I think maybe the problem is when you go up to the Students' Union, it's a very stringent, very serious setting. Um, obviously it's office space and I don't like the whole idea of come into my office, sit down and we'll have a serious chat. I'd much prefer, let's go down to the bar, now we don't have to drink obviously, but let's go down to the bar and have a nice informal chat and a generally nice background. Um, so I'd like to maybe propose um, allocated times during the week in specific places where we can have an informal chat. Maybe obviously the student union, they have different times, different meetings. The education officer in itself sits on 27 committees, so getting them all present at one time is tough. But to have people there in, a, in, a, in an area where it's, it's a very friendly background, I think, uh, I think it could, could entice people to come and get to know people. I, I like my personal favourite thing to do is chat to randomers enough until they're no longer random. So um, <laughs> that's, how, that's how you get friends. So <laughs> basically, yeah, I'd, like, I'd like to have a more just, just chat to everyone. Um, this, uh, this whole crack of people emailing, I think it's quite cold. Um, and it's more chatting virtually what I prefer a face to face talk. So that's my second one. Um, the third thing, the class rep system, every single year people try to reform this. There's always problems. There's, it starts off with 100 people going, down to 50, down to 20, down to just making quorum. So I mean, like that's, that's obviously a huge problem and uh, there is going to be that 20% of people who just do it for their CVs. And I kind of like to bring some extra responsibilities on the class rep by introducing a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring system. So say for example, I'm in biotech now and last year would have been third year. So I would have loved if a fourth year came to me from the class rep in the fourth year class and said, look, watch out for this lecturer. Make sure you go to all these ones. For your exam, you should focus on this, 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 and this. Here's some past exam papers from last year. Do you know, I think little things like that help. Um, so I mean, especially for first years that come in, it's such a different education system from secondary school to college because you don't have to go in like, you know, nobody has to go in and everyone has missed classes. But just to know from other people's experiences. So again, I think it's about utilizing the resources available to you to make your academic, I suppose, career in DCU as successful as possible. Now, there's other things I support in the upcoming year if I do get elected. Uh, there's a same-sex marriage next year. I'm in full support of that. And obviously any LGBT issues, I'd be completely behind that as well. Um, as well as that, then the nurses, I think, I, way before I even decided to run, I think it's a joke that nurses on their graduate pay get paid less than I do in a hotel. And I mean, they put in more hours, they put in more work than me. And there's been plenty of times when a lot of us have been going out, but the nurses can't because they have to sacrifice it for, uh, for work experience. Um, there's been other things someone said to me about a vending machine full of milk and bread. I don't know if that's anything to do with education, but you know, little things like that I'll look after. Um, I'm just going to finish up by saying that this question keeps going on, why do you think you're the best candidate? I think you can tell from my forehead that I've been here for quite a while. Uh, so 
I, I have a lot of experience. You know, I've, I've failed exams, passed exams, deferred exams. I've been through the extenuating circumstances. I've been through it all. And I'd like to just say that I have the experience. I will share the experience. And I'm hoping to improve the experience. Thanks. Fanula and there's a lot of familiar faces here, but just for the few years who don't know me too well, um, I am on Style Talk Committee, I'm on the Actors Committee, um, and this year I'm also one of the most rewarding roles I've had, the Humanities Convener. So it's delighted today uh, to see five people running for that position this year. I think that's a bit of a testament already to some of the work I've done to reform that role this year. Um, so basically, I've kind of been shadowing Karen a bit for the year as the Humanities Convener is an ed academic position on the Students' Union, and I really think that experience is going to be absolutely invaluable going forward now into a huge year of change next year in DCU. Um, but I'm just going to run through some of the points of my manifesto really quickly. And um, I think it's probably the most broad and wide-reaching of the three manifestos up here. And there is something for absolutely every single student in this manifesto. So, um, One of the main things we were trying to do this year, and we got so close to it, but um, if I get elected, it'll definitely be up and running for the repeats during the summer, and then again through the study weeks all next year as well, is to extend the library opening hours. I don't endorse the 24-hour library system that Trinity and some other colleges provide around exam time. I don't think this is beneficial to students' mental well-being, and it's not something we should be encouraging. But I do believe that at the moment it's definitely not serving students as well as it should be, so it needs to be open until at least midnight, if not later. And that will be run, if not by the library staff, by myself as VP for Education, and by class rep volunteers as part of their GASHCA contribution, which was something we introduced to the class rep scheme this year. Um, another thing I want to move towards, uh, especially for people who say, come to the end of semester and they've got a million assignments all due at once or say five, six exams in the space of two weeks, no one can do themselves any justice. So I want to revise marking schemes in line with lectures and move away from 100% gradings that any one element of your module can be worth 100%. I know there's some cases where this can't be done, but for a lot of modules this can be done and I think it's going to massively help students when it comes to stress and performing well and really doing themselves the most justice they can do academically. Um, another thing I want to do is lobby against lectures using the excuse that they will not put their notes on Moodle before lectures because students won't come. I think this is an absolutely disgraceful excuse and lectures should be working to serve the students who are making an effort and are attending. Everyone knows lecture generally aren't the equivalent of going to the lecture and it just does a disservice to students who come to lectures and are trying to keep up in class or trying to scroll everything down at the same time they're trying to listen. Um, another thing I want to do which I've had massive personal experience uh, with here is to improve the disability service in DCU. Anyone here who is lucky enough to have had experience of these know how hugely beneficial they can be to helping you at college or keeping you in college to that extent and I myself if you haven't been um, registered with the DARE scheme during in secondary school and come into college on that scheme, the awareness and the information about how to join the scheme and if you're even eligible for the scheme is not widely spread enough. Personally, myself, I had some massive uh, hardship at the end of first year and it was only then I realised that I should have been making use of these services all along and they've kept me in college, they've been hugely beneficial to me, but unfortunately I've seen friends who didn't know they were eligible for these services having to repeat years or drop out altogether only to find out that they could have been making use of this all along. So that's one of the things I'm really passionate about fixing up here in DCU. Um, as the guys are saying, every single year people come in, they look to fix up the class rep system. I think there's been really great work done with this by Karen O'Connor this year, and I know myself with the Humanities Convener role, I've had a great time trying to form that and make that as accessible to students as possible, so I'd love to be around next year to fix that up, but as well as that, the officers of council roles, because I don't feel like they're getting the full credit to at the minute that they should be, and there's such massive potential to better student life within those roles that that's a huge thing we need to work on next year. Um, another little thing, it kind of touches on welfare, but I think it's absolutely crucial for us to implement as a students' union, we're your union. If you vote me and I'm working for you June to June, it is a 12-month contract, not two sets of 12 weeks a term. So anyone who would have been up here over Christmas knows it can be a bit of a ghost town. We had power cuts and everything. It was like something out of our movie, Summer Christmas Time. But uh, there's very little student life going on then. And in line with SoberSock, which has recently been set up, I'd like to do uh, de-stress week which is a full program of activities like you would have say during shag week or any other week during term where we are helping you out in the evenings you've had a long day of study we're going to help you de-stress chill out a kind of non-drink orientated type of socializing which i think is going to be really beneficial to helping students do their best then when they go back to hit the books the next day um five seconds oh 
Uh, ooh, 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 so much paper. Um, I want to improve postgraduate with uh, engagement with mature students. Sorry, there's way too many things here. And then um, one of the things I did this year, so anyone who gets elected next year, anyway, the Students' Union, is going to be mandated to support the LGBT marriage equality thing this year. Next year, the referendum anyway, because I brought that motion to council this year. So that is one of the massive things here. I'd love to see voter registration drives on campus, because I feel like we're all third level educated students. Traditionally, it has always been students who have made the social change. Thank you. Please vote for me next Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, all right, uh, Kahir, look, I'll promise not to take too long, and I promise to try my best not to swear. Um, for those who know me, that's going to be a challenge. Um, hello, my name is Sean Rooney. I'm 21 years of age and I'm a candidate to be your education officer. Um, I've been here now for three years and I've seen the amazing role that the Student Union plays in the sports structure for students. And I have a number of fantastic ideas that I would love to see implemented over the next 12 months. Firstly and foremost, there are many, many practices within this university that drive students crazy. I'm sure everybody here has had some experience of a module where the assessment just decided to randomly change in the middle of the module, or uh, the core you've landed into TCU to find out that your course isn't actually as it's described in the prospectus. And I mean, it's, it's a key role in all of those committees that the education officer sits on to ensure that things are as advertised for students. On top of this as well, and I didn't realize as well, a number of things that I've learned over the last while is that how key a role the math support center plays in helping students, particularly in the science and engineering faculty where maths is such a massive, massive, massive part of the course. The key job of the education officer is to look at modules that have a massive fail rate. And we do have some modules in this, co this college that have an unacceptably high fail rate. And that's one of the things that the education officer has to ask the hard questions. Why are these students failing? Who's at fault here? And what can we do to fix it? We spoke an awful, or, uh, the other two candidates have spoke a lot about the class rep system. And that's something I'd like to address as well. First and foremost, to tie in with a lot of what our wonderful welfare officer candidates have said, I would like to roll out safe talk training to all class reps so that they are in a position to go back to their class and recognize the signs of, of mental health issues and mental health problems and be there in a position to act as the link between the union and the students. I mean, not every student is going to be comfortable and forthcoming to the welfare officer, but if, you know, Joe in their class or Joan says, listen, are you okay? What's, what can we do about this here? Let's go and do, do something about it. And one of the other things as well that I was, I was speaking about is, is the key role clubs and societies play in, stu in student life here. There's two aspects to this. First, they provide a healthy work-life balance. I mean, not everything can be serious issues and heart surgery. So they provide a release for students to uh, to let off after a hard day's work. On top of this as well, the skills that students learn through clubs and societies are the intangibles that will help them get the jobs in the 21st century. To be able to go into an interview and say, well, you know, I've experience with event planning. I've experience with fundraising. I've experience of, uh, of, uh, as a, on a committee. These are what we need to succeed in the 21st century. And on that su su subject of 21st century jobs, this is, I would like like to bring the role of campaigning back to the back to the purview of the education officer. Gary's already touched on the nurses' pay campaign. You know, I have my own mother at home that gets me out of bed and complains about uh, that even she, at 55 years of age, thinks that the that the nurse, student nurses are getting a raw deal. Um, on top of that, as well, I want to I want to campaign on the issue of the postgraduate maintenance grant. Everybody here knows now that it's nearly par for the course for people to, uh, to 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 come to the end of their degree and say, oh well, you know, I think I need a master's in order to get my to get a job. And if you're living on the grant, it's such a hard, it's such a hard change to do to go to spending the seven thousand euro that it is for the for the fees, and then um, having to support yourself. So I think we really do need to campaign to bring back the postgraduate maintenance grant. Okay, one minute. So. 
offer, I have lots of ideas, including my self-sourced intro module, um, working within the union to bring in the peer-to-peer -peer learning, and um, working hard to, in, within the class rep system to ensure that we're not always just about complaining here. It's about highlighting good lecturer practices and saying, well, that lecturer over there is fantastic. Why can't you be more like him or her? You know, and, and ensuring that these practices are replicated across the university. I really want to be your education officer because it's not about me and it's not about the other, or other candidates. It's about you, the students. Thank you. Okay, after the uh, education hostings, I'll be inviting the President of the Students' Union to give a very short three to four minute talk about the upcoming referendum on the hub financing. Okay. All right. Okay, education questions. You all have very large manifestos. If you had to prioritize one thing to get done in your term, what would it be? And we go in alphabetical order. Well, small. Most of the um, most of the points on my, my manifesto are about using the resources available to you. Now, one one I think personally is I'd love the database system as much as I'd love that because I think it's cool. Um, but more so, I'd I'd like to utilize a class rep system in a better way uh, because I mean, if they had the more responsibility, whether it's compulsory or not, to actually go down to the class below them, I think maybe it would push them to actually take a, take in hand the rest of their responsibilities, and we can have a better class rep system. Um, I think for myself, that one have to be a throw between the library hours and the um, disability service, but I know Ken's going to deal with the library hours, so I'll leave that one to him. So for me, it would be the disability services, because I know myself, without that, and I was lucky enough to get it in time when I did, that I probably still wouldn't be here, and I know far too many people as well whose time in college has been made so much simpler for them because of those services, and they need to be offered to everyone who needs them. As simply as for me, it's about uh, quality safe talk. Is, or is quality training for class reps, uh, including safe talk, because it's with that that we can achieve everything else. God, you can sound a bit more energetic. Go on, we've been here for three hours nearly. <laughs> That's better. A lot of students that fail modules feel like dropping out because of it. How do you think you can address this situation? Again, I want to be as friendly as possible. I want to be as approachable as possible. And I'd love if someone came and failed a module and, and said it straight to me. Whenever I failed an exam in the Christmas there, I went straight to Kieran um, because I find him approachable. I would never, ever influence anyone to drop out. I would give them every single possibility there is to, to just hang on because I hate my course, to be completely honest. I, I really don't like doing science, but I've just hung in there to get that degree. So I'd like to push people to do the same. I think if you fail a module, dropping out is absolutely the wrong thing to do. Like I know a lot of people will be a bit disheartened, especially because they are here first and foremost for the academic thing. But I've seen friends who failed a module or two, and it's actually given them the best year of their life in college, going back and repeating it for a year, especially people in really heavy academic courses, because it's given them a year where they have way less hours than they would otherwise, and they've gotten to get so involved in societies and make so many friends outside their course that they otherwise never would have. So if anyone fails a module, my advice be hang in there, get your degree, even if it takes that bit long. Longer. You're absolutely blessed to get another year in college. Ah, listen, that's failing a module is not the end of the world. Um, I think we've all got modules in all of our courses that we've absolutely despised, and for that reason, you know, whether it's not getting the module or not liking it or not being interested in it, I mean, we've all have been there. Um, for me, it's about looking at, well, why do you think you failed it? And then once you get the answer, we'll go from there. Uh, it's giving students access to the Grinds network or looking at what we can do for as them as the education officer. You've all mentioned it, but give us a specific example of how you would change the current class rep system. 
kind of feel like this is the only thing I keep saying uh, about the class rep system. But uh, obviously, I, like this year, there was there was a motion about pizzas come, being delivered to DCU efficiently. Do you know, I mean, there's things like this. It's it's about keeping on topic. It's about addressing uh, particular problems that that do address DCU. So I mean, as well as that, as well as the uh, the peer to peer mentoring, I'd I'd love to actually sort of sit down in the middle of it and sort of put a stop to uh, a lot of crack that's going on. It's, there's there's no need for it. Um, having been a class rep this year and the humanities convener kind of overseeing all the humanities class reps this year, I think the introduction of the Gashka scheme and the SE awards that we brought in this year are massive incentives to make the class rep system better and to actually make people be active class reps. But going forwards as well now, I think the progression of the convener lunches is a great thing because it's going to take away all the faculty specific issues that we do waste a lot of time in CRC talking about that aren't relevant to about. 75% of the people there, it's not to do with your faculty. The progression of the convener lunches is a great way to improve CRC for next year. Um, it's about, in my mind, um, utilizing kind of social media and making class rep council relevant to the average student. You know, a lot of people see it uh, and perception only sticks when there's some degree of reality to it, that people are going in there and it's a talking shop and it's about ensuring that once something is passed by CRC, be it to do with, um, you know, a motion on LGBT issues or uh, getting the desks fixed in the business building or or water fountains that there's some progression seen in those issues and once we see some progression we'll see a change <clears throat> okay anything you would do differently to this year's education officer and this year's SU anything you would do differently from this year's education officer and this year's SU I think you've done a great job this year, lads. Uh, honestly, I mean, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes that people haven't seen. Uh, generally, what people do see is the events that everyone goes to. Um, I'd like to continue on the work of what you've done. Um, and as well as that, you know, I, I've even mentioned that I've been up to you, Kieran, and I've been chatting to you the whole way through the year. And I mean, I just, I would like to continue on. There's, there's not much I'd like to do differently, but there, there is extra things I'd like to, to implement as in my manifesto. Um, hindsight is great foresight, but um, realistically probably one of the only things that I'd be wish we'd kind of gotten done sooner as I was a member of the SU this year was the extended library and open areas around Christmas because we just about had that and then at the last minute we just lost that so I know it's definitely going to be there for people in August and apart from that I think a brilliant job's been done and it's been great reform of the class rep systems and different things like that so I think Kieran's done a brilliant job this year. Um, there's two things I would I would like to do. I suppose that uh, weren't, weren't exactly done this year was um, run clinics before, during, and after the exams that are advertised out to students, not up in the students' union, but in, um, in in buildings throughout campus where before, during, and after the exams I can sit and students can come up and who wouldn't otherwise come up to the students' union and say, well, listen, what do I do about extenuating circumstances, deferrals, fails, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the other thing I would like to do is I would like to run CV workshops. I know the university university already runs them, but I think they'd be more effective if they came from the education officer. Okay. There's a number of questions that have been asked from the welfare candidates that also apply to the education candidates. How will you make yourself approachable to regular students? A lot of people feel that there's a click and the sabbats aren't approachable, especially if you're in the engineering or science faculties. I would agree with the, uh, the the click. You know, from from an outside perspective, it it always seems like a click. And as I've said earlier on, I would like to introduce an allocated time and environmentally not environmentally, but a friendly place to go where we can just chat. Now, I mean, even if it's just me eating lunch on my own, just come over and sit down, have a chat. If I do get the position, but I want to I want to have a more approachable um, students' union in um, in more friendly places to talk. That's that's my main my main thing. Thanks. Um, having a heap of friends in both of those faculties, I think I'd 
be quite surprised personally if any of them thought I wasn't unappro unapproachable. But um, my brother's an engineer as well, and I know there's really, really cool things the engineers do that the SU could make events out of. Like, I know the guys were all off designing robots and stuff last week, and they had competitions then. So I think if we just get some of our media crew down there and publicise that to the rest of the college, that could be a really, really class event that everyone could get involved with. I don't know, maybe even get the Horse Racing Society and put nods on the different robots as well. But just little bits like that, they do some really, really cool stuff out there. Uh, lecture addressing isn't just for election time. It's important that um, can, or the uh, education officer goes round to, to classes, even after freshers week, and makes himself known, particularly for our engineering and science. Um, I figured that one of the best things that um, an education officer could do would be to visit down to the Red Brick Common Room and have a cup of tea with the people down there and ask them what their issues are. We're getting there, lads, we're getting there. As education officer, you deal with a lot of high-level committee meetings, which involve a lot of prior reading. How would you deal with sitting in on these numerous committees in ensuring the student's voice is heard? So, biotech is a demanding course. Um, I've been in society life uh, from a very strong point since second year really. I've been into committees for the last three years. Um, I, I think I've proved that I can, I can manage my time and I can be organized. It's a demanding course, uh, like maybe from humanities, you could have 10 hours a week with mine, it can be 32 hours a week. And as well as that fitting into society life, I think I, I've sort of shown that I can, I can be organized and uh, I have time management skills. Um, being a part-time member of the SU this year, in an academic position, I've already sat on a lot of these boards, like academic games, so they're going to have to sit on next year anyway. So I'm well experienced in them, and I don't think it'd be an issue to add any more to my schedule, especially if I'm doing this job full-time last year, compared to balancing it with my course this year. So it's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to the reading, I suppose, like, has anybody seen the amount of submissions that come in for the SLC for grant apps and uh, for the Society Awards? Reading isn't an issue, it's just a matter of it has to be done for the students, so do it. Simple as that. Okay, okay. Nice. Each of the candidates throughout this election have prioritised mental health issues. What is the most effective way you believe you can do this in your role as education officer? Again, um, an approachable student union. I mean, if we have an approachable student union, it's, it's a massive resource that a lot of people don't tap into. Maybe they, they send an odd email now and then, but to have people to actually sit down and, and chat with, do you know, if you fail an exam, or if you have to defer an exam, or if you have an extending open circumstances. Now, obviously, I don't have the answer to that, but I do have the forms, I, I hope, and the, the correct procedure to go through. So, I mean, by using the student union as a whole, as opposed to just, just the welfare officer, I think you can get the, the much, much support needed for mental health. I think everyone has their causes they feel strongly about and having been massively affected by this myself during my time in secondary er, college, not secondary school, um, this is something I can definitely help with. I know last year anyway I was involved with the video that Kenneth put together for Mental Health Week where we talked about our own experiences and the amount of students that came up to me after that was insane and I was able to help all of them. So it's really about being able to connect with people and even if you don't have a clue what they're going to, to sit there and listen to them and just not be like, oh, it's going to be fine, it's going to be okay. Sit there and listen to them and just be with them. Yeah, I think I already highlighted one of the more tangible things that we can do for, uh, for, uh, for mental health issues, which is safe talk training for all class reps and for any student really who wants it, I think it should be made available. The other thing as well is that we can do is I think prevention plays a big role about making students aware of um, stresses in their life that could lead to these situations and being able to help them, you know, cut that out. Um, thanks. <laughs> If elected, what do you plan to do to support the Irish language on campus and off campus? Neil Longwell, Gormach, Jenna Merritt, Glanavale. 
so I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be the best at Irish, but anybody who is involved in Irish circles in DCU would, would know from the past three years that uh, I've been down to Oireachtas, absolutely great crack, uh, but down twice actually, and I, I've tried my very best to sort of embrace the language, but um, it, it's something that I just can't grasp. Um, obviously, I, I, imp I understand the importance of culture and, um, and maintaining that, and I would like to have um, an official uh, Irish house in DCU. Um, old school gone strong, old school gone anim, and one of the big things on my manifesto that I didn't quite get down to there was lobbying to every relevant board I'll be sitting on next year for a full time DC staff position for a cultural promotions officer. This is someone who is going to bring cultural things in. We want to do lots of events with the study abroad students, and there's a big thing with GA, and they want to do with all the Erasmus students and everyone GA events, and all, that will be an inter society thing. So that's on campus and off campus, and they'll do a tournament against all the other colleges at the end of the year. And then as well, we want traditional music nights in Newbury. Um, I'm not even going to attempt those few words of Irish that Gary did. I just have no concept of the language at all. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't love to. Um, I think that what we need to do is, uh, as a union is sit down and look at whether or not we want to go the route that other students' unions have gone to, such as in UCC, and have an Irish language officer on our executive. It's an option, and I think we should consider it. There. Given the recent decision of DCU students to re-affiliate to the USI, outline your plans for the next year ahead in, with this regard. In that regard. The last time DCU was with USI, I was nine years of age. Um, I mean, it's been that long, and look at me now. So, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what way it's going to go with the USI. Obviously, DCU is going to be main priority. USI have a lot of policies that I would, I would be following myself. But there's a lot of people apprehensive about it, and I'd like to just assure everyone that um, DCU is the, the first priority, and then hopefully we'll see how things go. Um, I think our affiliation with USI next year is going to be hugely beneficial, specifically to our nurses and our LGBT community. Being part of USI is going to help us be really proactive about our campaigns, getting out and supporting our students who are being challenged on a national base at the moment. Uh, USI have all the campaigns to help the nurses get their proper wages and along with supporting the LGBT community as well. So I think that's going to be massively beneficial for every student getting back involved in change in Irish social policy. I think that what the USI provides the education officer in particular is a network of expertise that we wouldn't otherwise have. For example, a friend of mine in WIT was the education officer down there and a student once landed up to his office and said, I have a problem. And he asked him what it was. He said, oh, I'm about to be deported. Like, I mean, what do you do when you're confronted with those kind of issues? Now you can turn around and say, I don't know, but hang on till I pick up the phone and we'll get somebody who does. Thanks. As an active DCU student class rep, I have noticed the disengagement of many students with student life outside balls and the few activities involving clubs and societies. If elected, how do you propose to tackle apathy that has grown over the last few years and an increased engagement with the Students' Union? We are around for the other two other times I asked it. As an active DCU student class rep, I have noticed the disengagement of many students with student life outside of balls and a few act, uh, actively involved clubs and societies. If elected, how do you propose to tackle apathy that has grown over the last few years and increase engagement with the SU? Got it? Got that. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Got there. So, uh, yeah, obviously, I mean, it's, it's down to, um, it's down to everyone being approachable, uh, not just the students' union. I mean, the class rep system is something that does have to be reformed, and it does have to be a community as opposed to uh, an organization. I think um, the more active the class reps are, the more active an entire classes will be, and therefore the more active a DCU will be, so as a, a community more so than just a university. 
Um, having had to commute to DC from Bray for my entire first year and a bit my second year here in college, I know how impossible it can be to be dedicated to societies if you have to get, say, two hours of buses to and from college every single day. So one of the main things I want to push is commuter appreciation mornings where we sort people out in the morning, a bit of tea, a bit of coffee, a bit of entertainment. I think our lunchtime events do really well and it's a great kind of way to promote sober fun on campus and it's a really handy thing for people to get involved with and to really get a good buzz going around campus that isn't having to hang around until say six, seven at night when the later events are on. So it's really... I mean, there's, again, it's, it's as simple as this. There's two aspects to it. One of it is becoming a more campaigning union where if we get involved in LGBT campaigns, women's rights campaigns, and the nurses' pay campaigns, I mean, that's, the, that's how we get people back engaged. The other thing as well is with people on placement. It's one of the issues I spoke about down in the nursing building on Friday is about just because you're on placement doesn't mean you're not a student here anymore and doing th looking at how we can get these people engaged on events on campus. Thank you. The humanities student who asked that really horrible question is asked to be asked to the education officers as well. With the cutbacks faced by universities around the country and with a particular targeting of the humanities for cutbacks, if, cutbacks, if courses were to be cut in DCU, which would you save and which would you cut? Do I? Don't think I'll be on it for one minute. Um, I have an extensive knowledge of the humanities course. I've always been science uh, and engineering. I mean, for me, when it comes to humanities, it's uh, contemporary culture and society and uh, communications that really stand out. Um, I suppose the best way to decide what needs to be cut, the one with the least demand. Um, I'd imagine <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way I can answer. No, obviously, nobody wants to be cut. Um, and we don't want to. Uh, I, I don't, don't know how to answer that question. I, I haven't. A, I haven't a clue about humanities. I really, really don't. I know humanities are the the flesh of the bone of DCU society life. Um, but I, I say it would be very hard to cut something unless there was there was very little demand. Um, as a communication student, I would argue that we are probably one of the most beneficial to college life here in DCU, and we do have one of the most thriving society and club lives in the whole of Ireland, and I think we're very responsible for that within the humanities building. Um, obviously, you can get away with cutting a humanities course a lot more than you can a nursing course or an accredited accounting course, because there are certain things they have to do when they go out into the workforce that we don't necessarily have to be able to do. But um, as the conveners were saying beforehand, as Gary was just saying there as well, if there isn't a demand for a course, it doesn't make sense to keep it running and I think at the moment there's one or two courses where that may be dwindling but for the minute there's nothing I would see that would warrant cutting within DCU. I mean, I, at the end of the day, you're, you're an education officer for everyone, regardless of what course they're on. But within humanities, certainly, that we're, we, have, we have been the target of, of cutbacks over the last number of years. We've lost staff, we've, uh, we've, we've, we've lost students, we've lost funding, we've lost equipment. But I would have to say that what we have to realise is that we're living in the 21st century, and we have to look at our courses in that light and ask ourselves, in the cold, high, hard light, today, well, is this course outdated? How is it going to help our students get jobs? That should be the only question, not money. Thank you. And so ended the gauntlet of questions for our education uh, officers. <laughs> I assume there's nothing else. No. Okay. Thank you very much for taking the time to come up here, guys. Well done. Okay.